Hey, y'all, Ramdino here, coming at you from North Carolina. Well, today I'm going to give you my gear review on my shelter system that I'm using out there on the trails. Whether you're a lasher, through hiker, or section hiker, hopefully this will help you make a decision if you're wanting to upgrade or go to a different type of system. In any case, to see my opinion of what I'm using right now, stick around. So my shelter system is the Lightheart Gear Solong 6, and I am uh, currently using the 2018 model. So a little background information on the uh, supplier. Um, Lightheart Gear is a cottage industry, family owned. Uh, they're from Fletcher, North Carolina. So you know, I don't think they've got a big factor or anything. Um, we'll see in just a minute, but like for instance, the ridge poles made from a piece of uh, piping that you could go to Lowe's and get that he's just kind of fabricated and adapted to fit their design and when I say he it's a uh, husband and wife and they've also got uh, it looks like they've got at least a son because the son was doing the demo for, for me uh, when I was looking at purchasing it and the mom sold it to me and the dad explained me how to put it up so it's very much a family organization I bought mine at ADCO Appalachian Trail kickoff uh, 2018 last year and uh, so that's kind of where I picked it up a lot of vendors up there a uh, lot of different uh, shelter system vendors and I chose them. Uh, I want to like the fact that they were a family uh, cottage industry. They're also from North Carolina. Uh, the father indicated that you know if I had any kind of problems or anything, uh, the repairs, they wouldn't charge for uh, you know repairs that were um, you know unless I just put it through a shredder, uh, they would take care of all the repairs for it, uh, which is nice. I haven't had to utilize that so, um, but I'll take him at his word for it. But they were also local, so if I had problems that were local for me, uh, I am about an hour from Fletcher, North Carolina. So uh, let's talk a little bit of, uh, about the Solong 6. It is a three-season hybrid. Uh, so by hybrid, I mean it's got a uh, partial uh, single wall. The actual interior section of it is double-walled, uh, made out of netting, and then, the, uh, and then it has the, the fly portion of it that is attached you can't separate the area that you're staying in the the mesh section from the fly um, but it does kind of have some aspects of a double wall except for over top where it's just a single wall but in the um, area below the actual top of it uh, the actual part that's exposed to the uh, rain uh, it is a double wall is a three season uh, it's a tracking pole tent uh, with no option for uh, freestanding poles, so you can't. They don't sell freestanding poles. Uh, they do sell sell poles that are collapsible. That you, if you don't use trekking poles, you can purchase these. Uh, but otherwise, it does take two trekking poles, and they fit into a ridge pole. We'll see in just a little bit when we go to the uh, putting it up portion of the of the video. Uh, but it does go. The two trekking poles go, do go into the ridge pole. Uh, and it takes uh, six stakes to put it out. And then it also has one owning pole. Um, so the owning pole and the, and the ridge pole are components and then uh, of course the tent and then uh, you also need a footprint. Now they say you don't have to have a footprint uh, but they highly recommend you have a footprint. Um, the specs on it say it weighs in at two pounds. Uh, that must be without the ridge pole or the bag or the um, the owning pole uh, and by owning pole I mean it's just a uh, two section carbon fiber pole and, um, and and the ridge pole of course is the plastic pipe looking thing we'll look at in a minute uh, but uh, because uh, when I weighed it it came in actually at 2.8 pounds and so by the time I put uh, actually in my stake bag I have seven stakes one a spare uh, and I use the titanium groundhog stakes, um, or the, the smaller version of it. Uh, it comes in right at three pounds for the system. So that would include footprint, the tent, ridge pole, uh, owning pole, uh, and the stakes. Uh, it packs down into about a six by 16 inch uh, pack uh, or sealed nylon bag that comes with it. Uh, you can probably compress it down a little more than that, uh, you know, if you if you tried. But that's basically what it comes down to. Uh, the floor area it's got about 30 square foot according to the specs on it. Uh, it's got two doors uh, and uh, one pocket. 
and then it has an awning on one side. So the other side um, you know, is more or less just a fly, a door with the fly on the outside. Uh, but then the other side does have a, what I would consider kind of a true awning slash vestibule uh, that you could probably cook under uh, if you wanted to. Certainly could store your gear out there. Uh, I store my gear inside. So it's roomy enough for one person to, uh, to store with their gear inside. Now, that being said, their website says uh, that uh, it's designed for the big and tall. Uh, it says the So Long Six is so long that the hikers over six foot eight will comfortably fit comfortably in this tent. There's so much room in this tent that two regular sized people can share it. Um, so we'll see in a minute, but there's no way two people can share that. Uh, I can get in there with my mattress. Uh, I guess if I didn't have an air mattress, I might could share it with somebody. It would be really cozy. Uh, as far as six foot eight, uh, you know, I am uh, like five nine, and when I sit in it, my head comes uh, pretty high up in it. And certainly the way the the slant or the slope is on each side of it, um, I would kind of have to scooch down in the middle of my sleep system and then sit up. Otherwise, I'm going to hit my head against the mesh on the inside. The version I have is a sealed nylon version. It also comes in a sealed poly. Uh, that's a 30D sealed nylon. Um, the difference between the poly and the nylon is that, uh, and by sealed nylon, it means siliconized, so it's been coated with silicone. Uh, likewise for the poly. Um, but the, um, the difference, I think, is that the seal nylon probably retains and absorbs more water than the seal, pylon, uh, seal poly whenever it gets wet. Um, but both of them, uh, if it rains, both of them will wet out. So by wetting out, I mean that, uh, that if you know, they'll start to sag from the water weight, they could com come in contact with the interior mesh, and then that may result in a leak. Um, it does have a 10 inch bathtub floor. So the bathtub floor is a portion uh, that you're sitting on and then it turns up into the vertically. And so that's more of a you know, waterproofing around the outside so that if a um, little bit of water gets up against it, it won't splash inside uh, and get in through the mesh. Uh, so, um, and it used to be those were eight inches, those are 10 inches and that is held in place uh, by four carbon stays that uh, hold it vertically. Uh, it does have uh, the uh, line locks on it, so those are real convenient, not have to worry about tying stuff off. Uh, it's got two top vents that are there to help with condensation. Uh, they do help somewhat with condensation, but they certainly don't eliminate it. Um, condensation, even in my older tent that was a, a, a double wall tent, uh, that had a separate fly that you could take off. I, you know, the mesh is so close together uh, on the interior section that you can still get condensation on it. Uh, it still traps that condensation, and if you run your hand against it or your head against it, it's going to drip and get wet, uh, you know, whatever you run against it. If you have equipment against it, if you're sleeping by against, against it for some reason, uh, it's, and it's probably going to get wet from the condensation. So, the vents help a little bit, but they certainly do not eliminate all of the condensation. As I indicated before, it takes six stakes to take uh, to uh, set it up and two tracking poles, or if you want to purchase their, their collapsible poles, you can do that, uh, but it is not freestanding. So the base price is $298. So by base price, I mean um, that that's just the actual shelter. Uh, and that is a ridge pole. Uh, you'll have to specify what type of trick tracking poles you're using. So, uh, because some tracking poles have a different diameter on the end. So, particularly black diamond and leaky tracking poles, their diameter of the tips are different. So, they have different size ridge poles that um, that that they'll sell you or not that, that are included with the shelter. And they'll need to know what type of tracking poles you have in order to uh, give you the correct one so that it will fit in your tracking poles. So uh, it comes with the shelter, that price comes with the shelter, uh, the ridge pole, and that's it. So the extras that you'll have to pay for is the owning pole. Uh, so they have a carbon fiber owning pole, and I don't think they sell any other type that you have to pay for. So you can't use your owning in anything other than fly mode. 
and we'll talk about the different modes of owning comes in in just a few minutes but uh you, you can only you have to have that pole but they're going to sell that to you at an extra uh they also charge you if you want um, zipper extensions uh, little pieces of rope put on your zippers. They're going to charge you for that rather than just leaving the zipper with the standard zipper pull. Um, and uh, what really I find remarkable is that they're going to charge you for seam sealing. So t for me, uh, and, and their, their website specifically says the uh, shelter has to be seam sealed. So that means it's not waterproof. Uh, without that seam seal and they will sell it to you without that or they'll charge you extra to sell you a shelter that is water tight none of them are waterproof but water tight as much as possible well for me i kind of had a little bit of problem with that i went ahead and paid for it um, but i kind of had a little bit of problem with that that i'm having to pay them to make my tent watertight so it looks like it ought, that just ought to be standard and included in the price now of course you could say well if they did that, then they would just turn around and make the price. Uh, instead of 298, it would be uh, 333. So, um, yeah, they could have done that, but I guess to get it down below the 300 price point, they they chose to leave that off. But I think that ought to be included in that. Now, that's just my opinion. So, for everything that that I needed to get for the tent, so that would be the shelter, uh, the carbon fiber owning pole the seam ceiling oh and i forgot to mention the footprint uh they say they don't necessarily have to have the footprint with this uh shelter but they advise it um in this case uh when i bought it at adco they gave me the footprint but they will if you buy it online they're going to sell you that footprint uh and it's just a piece of tyvek so you, you know, if you have access to scrap tyvek you can do that yourself uh, but in this case uh the entire thing before shipping and handling was three hundred and eighty three dollars and then of course you'd have to add the shipping and handling to it uh, and any kind of tax so uh, you know, that's getting up there over four hundred dollars uh, so you know there are other shelters out there that are made out of cuban fiber i'm not going to mention any other names here but um that you might want to you know think about that well if i spent just a little bit more money uh i could get this type of tent so or this type of shelter so those are some things to think about uh, when you're purchasing that um, I don't necessarily regret the purchase um, I've had the tent and uh, and the shelter's done great uh, so we'll talk about some pros and cons of of what that's done out there uh, for me on the trail um, it's pretty roomy on the inside with a um, you know for me uh, for just one person there's no doubt uh, but if you uh, there's really in my opinion no way you're going to get more than one person in there particularly with a pad so it's big enough for me to get in there with a pad and to put uh, my pack and stuff on the inside um, it's lighter than my old tent now it's not necessarily a, a, a pro or con for this particular tent but just for my situation uh, my old tent system was probably around five and a half pounds uh, so this has cut that my weight down by roughly 40 45 percent so i mean i've only cut my weight down by about uh three pounds but um, that's pretty significant uh when you look at the percentage wise of around 40 percent uh that i've cut out of my pack weight so that was one of the reasons that, that i went ahead and purchased it um and i just uh i didn't want to get a you know i didn't feel like spending uh six or seven hundred dollars uh, for a Cuban fiber tent at the time. Uh, it's good in the wind. Uh, I stayed at uh, um, a Chihu 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 Chihuahua uh, and I've got a video on that, that where I was uh, staying there on a section hike there. I'll include a link up here, include a card for you, uh, so you can go take a look at that. But I stayed up there. It was a really, really windy night, and, uh, you know, I mean, it was so windy that it was like, uh, you know, the wind blowing through the trees is kind of like the surf at the beach like white noise so it put me to sleep but that's a kind of a testimony to how much the wind was blowing uh and it blow blew all night and the tent stayed up fine so it didn't have any kind of problems with it um the uh awning is just on one side like I indicated so it's not a symmetrical tent and uh the awning you can put in two different modes you can put it in 
in store mode or you can have it in awning mode. So in awning mode, you've got more room there uh, in, to utilize it for even for cooking. Uh, it's certainly a lot easier to get in. Uh, if you want to put it in storm mode for a big storm coming through with, uh, you know, associated with a lot of wind, uh, then you can cinch it down. You can take the pole out and cinch it down uh, to where um, it, the wind can't get up underneath it as much. Uh, it is hard to adjust it, if not impossible to adjust it to storm mode from inside. So. Uh, the best thing to do if you know there's weather moving in is just go ahead before you go to bed at night is uh, go ahead and put it in that storm mode. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have to get out maybe in the middle of the night, in the middle of a rainstorm and adjust it and then you're going to be sopping wet. Now, as I indicated, it will absorb water. So that's just additional pack weight that it's going to add to it. Uh, they don't say you have to have a footprint, but they do recommend you. Um, they have placed in the uh, on the interior on the floor. They placed these silicone bars, um, and uh, basically it just looks like they've added a couple stripes of uh, silicone to the floor. And the purpose of that is to uh, supposedly keep your mat from sliding around on the sealed nylon because sealed nylon is pretty slick, um, and to keep it from sliding around. But uh, my experience being, it really doesn't help out any. So um, the the bars are really they don't really do much for it. Um, I think it behaves really like a single wall as far as the condensation goes uh, because I always have condensation. I can't really tell that big a difference um, with the vents uh, out or the vents in. And probably the biggest uh, con I would say to it is that uh, you have to erect it by getting inside of it. So if you look at their directions on their website uh, and their YouTube video of how to put it up, you have to do it uh, by sitting on the inside. So in other words, you have to unzip it, uh, get inside of it. Uh, of course, after you've staked out all four corners, in order to erect it and get the ridge line up, you have to sit inside of it. So in order to do that, you have to unzip the awning and unzip the fabric, which means uh, it's impossible to put up uh, in a storm without getting the interior wet. So I didn't think about that before I bought it. Had I thought about that, I probably would have looked at something a little different, but um, I don't see any way to erect it without getting interior wet in the rain. So that is a definitely a con for me. Now, do the pros and cons outweigh it? Well, we'll summarize that at the end of the video, but let's go ahead and put it up and show you how it goes up and, uh, and, and what the interior of it looks like. Okay, so this is the size of it. Uh, you probably could squish it down maybe a little bit, but that's pretty pretty much is about as small as it's going to get. Let's go ahead and get into this seal nylon bag. Uh, I am able to uh, put my um, roll up my footprint in there. This is the uh, pipe that I was telling you about. I'll give you a close up here of it, but uh, it says shark bite on it, which is a plumbing. Uh, pipe manufacturing and make fittings and everything so this is actual piece of plumbing pipe that uh, he took and then he just took the ends and melted them or heated them up and then that way they can fit in your tracking poles are going to fit in them you know one on each side like this <clears throat> and so um, obviously a black diamond is going to have a different diameter uh, here than a uh, leaky pole would so you got that you got to have that here's the carbon fiber uh, it's actually, uh, looks like it is a three piece. I think I said it's a two piece earlier, but anyway, three piece carbon fiber. This is your awning pole, uh, ridge pole, need those items. And, uh, of course you're going to need your stakes. So let's go ahead and put the thing, put this sucker up.
So as you can see, if you've got muddy feet, you have to take, you're going to take your shoes off. Or if it's raining, I've already got the interior of it wet. So one thing you're going to do, one thing you're going to do here is you're going to now at this point, once you get uh, the pitch, the, the ridge line put in, the ridge pole put in, you're going to go ahead and raise it a little higher and extend your uh, tracking poles out. And then the next step is to go ahead and extend your bathtub up by picking up uh, the corners each have the uh, carbon fiber uh, bathtub extenders that you're going to pick up. All right, and then the next thing will be to put the two awnings out. And the last thing you're going to do is go ahead and put up your vents. So if I took my time, I could probably get a little tighter pitch on it, uh, but for purposes of this video, we're going to call that it for right now. Let's take a look on the inside. Okay, so here's the, what the awning looks like, and that is in the awning mode. If you wanted to convert it to the storm mode, we would take this out and pull the tab here and the tab there together, uh, and then that tab right there where the uh, poles coming through, we pull all that together, uh, use that carabiner over here, and it will go up against the tent. I'll show you what that looks like in just a few minutes, but that would be putting in the storm mode. But let's go ahead and go inside and look at the room we've got. So, like I said, I am uh, five foot nine, so I've got plenty of headroom here in the middle. Uh, once I move back about here, then I start getting into the shelter because of the pitch how fast it goes down right here. So uh, that's where I'm gonna, in this fabric here, fabric here and right there, that's single wall. Now this would be a, considered double wall because it has the fly here, but this would be single wall. And so once my head, no matter which way I'm sleeping, once my head contacts this, then I'm going to uh, have a, you know the condensation that's there or water that's bled through uh, that's just on the outside uh, is going to uh, come through, bleed through on the interior. We talked a little earlier that they've got some uh, siliconized uh, striping in here. You can't really tell it looking at here, uh, and uh, but it's it doesn't really do any good. Its purpose is to kind of prevent me from falling or sliding around if I'm on a bit of a hill, but it doesn't really help out much, um, if if at all. But you can see the bathtub. Uh, the bathtub on the outside. Uh, I would say it's probably about eight inches. I think it's advertised as ten, but it's really more, more like eight. If you take into account the fact that, you know, it, on, it may be ten at the ends, but on the sides it's only about eight, maybe maybe six to eight. So, but haven't had a problem with that. And certainly, if you get it's not a, a bathtub, so you get water flowing against you, then you're going to get wet in that or not. Couple things, see the uh, the tracking poles there, they, they have a reinforcing section down here at the bottom that they go in. Uh, it does have one single pocket. Uh, and then you can see how the ridge pole attaches up there. It's just got some Velcro stays that holds the ridge pole in place. Um, but as I said, for a single person, plenty of room in here for, for me and my gear but not enough room in here for two people. It's just, that ain't gonna happen. A couple other features that I'll just go ahead and point out. It does have these uh, little stays here uh, that will hold back your fly portion or your mesh portion. Uh, it does that for both sides. This is the, the graphite poles that I was uh, telling you about for the bathtub, the uh, erection of the bathtub. Here is the vents and See, there's not a lot of ventilation going on there, 
um, and this is the awning so I'll go ahead and put it in storm mode now so you can see what that looks like uh, but you can see you can roll up uh, it's got four door or not four doors but two doors in it so both those can be rolled up on each side and then this section here is mesh so uh, you know as of course that side is over there so you would have plenty of uh, ventilation should you decide that's how you want to set it up so let's go ahead and put it in storm mode okay so to put it in storm mode gonna have to have uh, obviously the awning zip down and what you're gonna do is you're gonna loosen up this right here gonna take the pole out and then you're gonna tighten back up on this but you're going to, uh, before you do that, you're going to take your carabiner and clip all of these stays together. And then you'll just tighten it up. And that channel right there will drain water down uh you know down away from it so that's pretty much how you put it in storm mode well as you can see it does not have a huge footprint that it takes takes up uh so you can put it in a relatively confined area uh, certainly there are smaller tents uh shelters that you'll find um One of the features that I really like is these uh, line locks right here and this type of cord. It is uh, very reflective. It's orange, uh, looks yellow on the screen, but it's orange uh, and it's very reflective at night. So you can really see this thing. If you're walking through the woods, coming back from somewhere, it really lights the, those, those lines really light the place up. Uh, and this is reflective right there as well. So that helps you find it if you have to go take care of something in the middle of the night. Folks, that is all I've got for my review on the Solong 6 from Lightheart Gear. Uh, if you like this video, appreciate you giving me a thumbs up. Go down and hit that subscribe button so you'll get the uh, rest of my notices, not only for the uh, weekly trail update, but also for any more gear reviews. Uh, appreciate you leaving a comment. Love listening to comments. Got any questions, uh, then I'll be glad to answer those. And as always, appreciate you, and we'll see you out here. One of the features that I really like is these fell in a hole appreciate you watching coders wanting to hone in on it uh cut